So uh, today's video, um, I'm going to be um, I'm ready to bottle um, what I'm calling six juice wine. Um, I've already racked it, um, and you've seen me do that. So there's a little time lapse of me racking it. Um, the six juice wine was basically um, I had finished making the the Concord wine with just plain Concord juice, and it sort of was sort of it was good, but it was sort of a one note wine. And so I looked in my pantry and found three bottles of juice, each of which had different juices in them. Um, so combined um, together, um, we have uh, pomegranate, uh, black cherry, apple, arona berry, plum, and grape juice. And so I hope that that would uh, produce a nice, uh, more complex uh, wine. Um, so um, I pitched that. I racked it, okay, and uh, and now um, I'm ready to bottle it. Um, but before I did that, um, I thought um, I would uh, take a little uh, um, uh, different twist on today's and do a little a uh, little bit of a workshop uh, sort of a, a piece here. Um, and so I've been bottling with uh, re I've been reusing uh, screw top wine bottles. But I tend to buy more uh, corked wine bottles, um, and um, recorking um, is sort of a pain in the butt. I don't have a, a corker. Um, I looked at buying one, um, but uh, then I saw a video on another platform that shall remain unnamed, um, and they mentioned uh, that you could buy these um, reusable stoppers. Um, uh, in the beer making community, we call these Grolsch um, because Grolsch beer comes in those kind of bottles, um, and uh, and so they uh, they had uh, linked to um, um, uh, an Amazon page to buy these. Um, they have an affiliate link. Um, I'm going to put a, a link to these uh, in the description if you want to get your own. Um, assuming they work. Uh, which I don't know. I haven't opened the package yet, um, but I don't have any affiliate uh, link status, so there there will be no affiliate uh, link in mine. It's just uh, for your reference. Uh, I'm sure you could find these elsewhere. Um, but what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to uh, through TV magic, um, hopefully simultaneously. Um, put some of these together and uh, bottle um, the wine um, and we'll see how it turns out uh, at the end. Uh, so, uh, like I said, these are, um, I haven't opened this yet, so tear that off. And it looks like there's some spare um, <clears throat> gaskets. Um, so each of these is a swing top, I guess. And close out. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's these collars, I guess, which go. And bolts and these things. So I guess I have to figure out how these go together. So, we'll take a bottle. Um, it looks like that goes there. That goes. So 
Let's go. Let's put a nut and bolt in and see if we can get it to work. I'm not going to tighten it up all the way. Okay, that works. I don't know what this is for exactly. But that does the trick. So that puts a very tight seal on that, um, and so this band snugs up against the rim of the bottle, and I'm just going to tighten that a bit more. to hang it. Um, um, these washers or these nuts have little um, ridges on them so that's like a built-in lock washer. Um, so, um, so that looks pretty good. Um, the uh, the, the uh, gaskets here uh, look to be silicone so they should last a good long time. Um, I'll try one on a different uh, brand bottle here <clears throat> and so um, hopefully this will let me reuse um, use a bunch of uh, wine bottles okay, this one it's behaving differently Not too bad once you figure out how they go together.
there we go. Okay, I think that'll work. Um, and uh, now it's time to uh, for me to bottle, and uh, then we'll uh, have a little taste and see how it came out. Um, so, um, yeah, it's been uh, 65 days, or just over two months since I started this. Um, I did oak it, so um, so again we'll see uh, we'll see how that is. Um, it's going to have a um, alcohol by volume uh, that's fairly low, only um, only around eight or nine percent, because it did not have a huge amount of sugar in the wine to begin with. Um, but that's okay. I like a dry wine, and uh, I don't drink it for the alcohol per se. Um, oh. I also used a different yeast this time. Okay, normally I use uh, Fleischmann's bread yeast, um, but uh, for um, for this I used uh, uh, Lalvin K1 V1116 uh, yeast. Um, it's a wine yeast, um, and it's known to bring floral notes to the wine and work well for difficult uh, fermentations. So since this was a really odd um, blend of, uh, of juices and um, a low um, initial specific gravity, so not a lot of sugar for the yeast to work with. Um, I thought having uh, um, a, a yeast that was really optimized for this might work better. Um, I used a half a packet um, of the yeast because I was only making a gallon um, and the packet is good for five gallons. So, so um, Fermentation did, did go fine. Um, there were no issues with the fermentation. Um, so um, let's, uh, I'll put on some more um, stoppers and we'll bottle some wine. So I did the math and it did come to 8% alcohol. Um, and the uh, bottle cappers uh, worked very nicely. I haven't tasted this yet, so um, let's give it a taste, and you'll see my expression on first tasting. So, it smells good. It's very mild in uh, flavor. It's got um, it's sort of a plum color. Um, pretty clear. It's got a tartness to it. Uh, there's obviously no residual sugar um, in this. The final uh, reading was 1.002. Um, it's very drinkable. Um, and uh, and yes, it, it you can taste uh, you can taste the pomegranate. You can taste the plum. Um, and um, not much of the grape, a little bit of the cherry. And that grows on you. So, um, you know, by all means, see what's in your pantry and uh, put it in a put it in a bottle and ferment it and see uh, see what you got. Um, this was uh, this was this was not bad. Um, I don't taste any of the oak, but I suspect that it's uh, contributing um, a little bit to the uh, to the tannins and the mouthfeel. Um, yeah, good, very good. Um, so. See you next time.